y'all. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. It's me, Kia Simone, and let's catch up on Real Housewives of Potomac, but I don't really know what's going on either. The whole NECA and Wendy thing is giving me 50 Cent and Ja Rule back in the day, and NECA is 50 Cent when 50 Cent just came in and decided I'm going to pick a fight with Ja Rule so everybody will know who I am. Now, work for 50, I don't know if it's going to work for NECA, but let's just get into it. Before we do, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Now, I'm a few episodes behind, but we ain't miss nothing but some pickleball and them picking fights. What the hell is pickleball? I don't know. What the hell they fighting for? I don't know either. So somewhere around three episodes ago, we start at NECA and her husband going to see a fertility specialist. She's trying to schedule a pregnancy between all laid jobs and him being in and out of the state. Karen is hosting some pickleball event for all of the couples to attend for them to come together and hash out whatever issues they are fighting about. So NECA gets a call from Karen inviting her and her husband to this event. She's all excited about pickleball. It's going to be so much fun. Fun. Her husband said, I don't know what pickleball is. She said, me neither, but I'm just excited to go. Okay. That told me a whole lot about her personality. It gives very much, I don't know what's going on. I just know I want to be down. So NECA is talking to her husband about this invitation and this event where it's going to be all the couples. And she said, well, all the couples means Wendy and Eddie. And she goes into this convoluted a story. Apparently, NECA got a call from her cousin-in-law from her husband's side, some cousin named Lebe. So Lebe is friends with Wendy's older sister, Ivy. I think that's her name, child. Lebe got a call from Wendy's older sister telling her that Wendy had an issue with NECA because apparently NECA was using Wendy's name for clout to get on the show. Girl, just NECA is telling her husband that Wendy and Wendy's family were apparently very threatened by NECA coming on the show. And her husband is saying, well, maybe they didn't see you as a fellow Nigerian. Maybe they only saw you as competition coming to take the one Nigerian spot. Now, if that ain't a scarcity mindset, I don't know what the hell is. If either side is of the mindset that somebody is coming to take my spot and aim but the one spot and I'm representing this group of people, that that's, that's a problem. That is a scarcity mindset. That is the absence of the belief that my gift will make room for me. I don't give a damn who at the table. I don't care if we all came up in the same neighborhood on the same block. Hey, homegirl, I'm here to bring my gift. So then NECA and her husband go on to talk about the fact that apparently they got beef with Wendy's husband too. Wendy's husband, Eddie, and NECA's husband, Ike, went to the same college. They were both members of an African Students Association. NECA is of the impression that her husband and Eddie knew each other and her husband said that Eddie disowned him. NECA said they were actually friends on Facebook, but after NECA got the call that Wendy's mother had submitted her name to a shrine, Eddie also turned around and unfollowed Ike on Facebook. I said, not, not unfollowed on Facebook? NECA said she thinks it's ridiculous and she thinks Wendy must wear both the skirt and the pants in that house. And I think you need to find a mirror because if there's anybody that has the commodity on ridiculous, it is you. It is absolutely ridiculous. To have this imaginary beef, and even if the beef ain't imaginary, this I know them and they know me. I, girl, why are you this desperate? to be claimed and acknowledged. It's giving very much, I don't think they really know us, but I want them to. So we move on, we see Robin and Giselle getting together to catch up. They're gonna catch up ahead of this whole pickleball event where Robin is expected to bring her husband for hire one. So Giselle is trying to be a halfway decent friend and prepare Robin for the opinions of others. She said, you do know everybody gonna have their opinions and they somethings to say. Robin said, we don't give a damn about their opinions. That's the part y'all should know. Well, the part we do know is you don't give a damn about the truth. So I don't expect you to give a damn about an opinion. Well, apparently Giselle has some opinions of her own to get off of her chest. She said that she and Robin had a live event for their podcast. Juan was in attendance. Giselle and Juan had a conversation, some exchange of words about how Giselle feels about all of Juan activities. Giselle said now while she had a little smoke with Juan, she's trying to make sure that there is no smoke with her and Robin. Now she's letting Robin know that yeah, me and your man had words and uh, your man raised his voice at me. I just FYI. Robin said he was yelling at you. Giselle said yeah, because he told me that you told him that I told you. I don't believe shit he said. So I kind of take that as yelling. Well, Giselle, we know how you take reinterpret and misconstrue shit. But in this case, the way Robin came back with her typical Robin defense made me believe what Giselle said. Robin said the man wasn't yelling at you 
What it is, is the coaching has made his hearing bad, which makes him talk real loud. So it ain't that he's yelling at you. It's that he can't hear you and he can't hear his damn self. So so he's yelling at you. Giselle said Juan made it very clear that he is not happy with her. He explained to her that he is a sexual guy, but he is adamant that he did not sleep with that woman. All right, Bill Clinton. So you know Robin ain't answering no questions about her relationship for too damn long. So she changed the subject. She told Giselle about the whole beef between Wendy and NECA, how apparently Wendy has it out for NECA because NECA was using her name for clout and NECA is claiming that Wendy's mama was using her name at a shrine for spell work. Child, it's a mess. Giselle said she don't know nothing about all that witchcraft and spell work, but she know it ain't nothing to play with. She married to a whole pastor. She was a first lady. And one thing she know is she don't want no parts of this shit. So then we move on to Candace's house where she is at home catching up with her mother and they're actually getting along. Candace says she thinks her mother has a newfound respect for her with her going on tour and pursuing her music career. She said now they ain't perfect. They still have their moments and they have to tussle from time to time, but it is far less than it used to be. Candace is home loading the dishwasher and, and, and pouring the cascade all over the damn dishes in the dish. What the hell? She said the dishwashers don't work that good. Her mama said, oh, you've been complaining about these dishwashers for the last three years. Maybe I need to buy you two new ones. Oh. Miss Dorothy is hell because she sling money like she sling insults, but damn it, she gonna be there. Candace said, well, hold on now since you feeling generous. Um, I, I got a tour that I'm planning that, that costs a lot of money, so could you get me a tour gift instead? Her mama said, oh, okay, so I'll add that to the two dishwashers. Oh, boy. One thing she gonna let you know is who's mama. I know you got your cute little job on TV and you're on tour and stuff, but I'm mama. Yeah. So since they're talking about money, Candace and her mama sit down to talk about Candace's upcoming tour. She said this tour is going to be bigger and better. She has more cities, but it's going to cost more money. In other words, I'm going to need you to be on standby. Thank you so much. Candace told her mama how Chris was losing his mind about all the money she was spending being on tour. Her mama said... Okay, like how much of it is he making? And Candace saw it too. Candace said, why are you looking like that? Her mama said, looking like what? She said, crazy, like you looking. She said, well, I was just wondering, what does Chris have going on? What is Chris working on? Candace said, well, he's doing virtual classes. He's doing private chef events. Her mama said, and he's getting paid for those things. Her mama said, won't be no deuce, big little male jiggle old bullshit going on around here. Candace said, no, he doing for fun. So her mama is going right on down there. I told you they ain't your damn friend list. And she said, well, how, how are you and Robin? Have you and Robin talked? Candace said, I don't know about all that. I don't know about getting together with Robin because Robin sat right there while her friend was running around spreading this false narrative about my husband and my marriage. Her mama said, well, I don't want you to hold on to grudges that long. I don't want you to stay mad with people for extended periods of time because life will handle them. Well, Candace, Candace don't believe in that. Candace believe in being mad till I see life handle your ass. So we move on to the pickleball event where Karen Ray and Karen's assistant are setting everything up, preparing for everybody to get there. The first to arrive is Giselle and no man. She said her forever plus one Cal is coming. Karen does take this opportunity to let Giselle know that she thinks this young boyfriend is doing her good. She said, I actually enjoy you lately. So we see the rest of the couples arrive. We see Mia and Gordon followed by Wendy and Eddie. Candace comes, but there's no Chris because Chris actually has a job. He had to work. Now, Candace did bring her grudge against Giselle as a plus one. She refused to speak to Giselle and Giselle refused to speak to her. After the way Candace dragged her at that reunion, she said nothing good can come from her speaking to Candace. So they ain't got shit to say to each other. So the rest of the ladies are coming. We see Ashley, her assistant, and her stiff twerk, followed by Neca. Now, Neca comes in a little bit late. She gets there after all the ladies. She comes up and hugs Mia, and Wendy is standing next to Mia. Now, Wendy didn't reach out for a hug the way that Mia reached out for a hug. So Neca hugged Mia, and when Wendy wasn't paying her no damn mind, Neca said, hey. Wendy said, hey, girl. Now, the last to arrive and make a grand entrance is Robin and Juan. Now, everybody is shocked to see Juan, but where the hell? else would he be he ain't got no damn job robin got on her i'm trying to keep my man outfit i don't know what in the see-through suzanne summer's hell she got on now when robin gets there she comes in hugging and greeting everybody but candace you know her and her friend are one band one damn sound candace said i'm racking my brain trying to figure out what the issue is between me and robin and i'm coming up short well production didn't come up short they pulled up all the clips headlines every damn thing of candace talking cash about robin and her philandering husband. 
And one of them clips that they showed, Candace said that they need to recast the show. Ma'am, you petitioned for the lady to get fired. You cannot expect a hug. So they play their pickleball game. They have a girl's game, a guy's game, and then they get to the real game, which is hashing out this drama and bullshit. So they sit down to eat and Karen starts out by explaining that not everyone here is on good terms. And the first person she called out was Robin. She said, we just happy that Robin even showed up. Robin said, now here you go with this bullshit. Why would you call my name? Why are you calling my name? Soon as Karen said, we can't even believe Robin came. Juan got the hell up out there. Juan said, I ain't got time for this bullshit. Juan walked straight in front of the damn camera. Juan don't give a damn about y'all scene. I don't give a damn what y'all got going on. I see the train coming for me. This is some bullshit. And the rest of the men followed him. So Neka took the opportunity to address the issue between she and Wendy. She said there was a message that got misconstrued between us. And Ashley jumps in to say that Neka brought up a conversation to her that she misconstrued to Wendy. And she told Neka that she told Wendy the wrong thing. At this point, Wendy needs to take everything that comes out of Ashley's mouth with a grain of salt. Because every beef Wendy has had has started with Ashley said. Ashley was the one that pulled her aside with the he say she say when she got into it with Giselle and Robin from the giddy up. Candace said okay well if we're all in agreement that Ashley is the problem as usual then y'all should be good right? Neka said uh -huh, I mean well I don't know her to have a problem with her and Wendy said the same thing I mean yeah I don't know her to have a problem with her. Neka said yeah that's what I just said so you're just repeating what I said. Okay, so you do have a problem with her? Wendy said, no, I'm not repeating what you said. I'm stating a fact. The fact is, I don't know you. Neka said, okay, you may not know me, but I did hear that you had a problem with me. Wendy said, well, how am I going to have a problem with you if I don't know you to have a problem with you? Just here we go. Now, I don't know if there was some conversation in between that got cut out that we missed, but Neka's response to Wendy asking her, how am I going to have a problem with you when I don't even know you is, I'm aware of the phone call that your sister made to my in-laws about me joining this group. And I'm also aware of the phone call that your mother made saying that she submitted my name to a shrine. Just what the f So Wendy, of course, is shocked and appalled. She said, my mom? Necka said, girl, your mom said those things. Now, you ain't gonna call my mama too many idol-worshipping witches. Wendy said, sweetie, I never called you. What in-law? Who is your in-law? Necka said, Lebe is my in-law. You know her. Wendy said, I never called her. Necka said, your sister called her and you were on the other line. I said, not the three-way game. So now, Wendy is trying to catch Necka in a lie and she's saying, see, your story is switching up because you said I called Lebe and now you're saying my sister called her. Necka said, well, let me clear this shit up. Wendy said, well, clear it the fuck up. Necka said, I am clearing up, bitch. So now the whole table is, oh my God, don't call that no bitch. Wendy said, I've been nothing but nice to you and you call me a bitch. So Wendy is still doing the Mariah Carey. I don't know her. Necka said, you know me enough for your mama to be submitting my name to shrines. You know me enough to have your mama threaten me. Wendy said, well, pull up the phone records then. And, and Necka did. She she pulled up all the phone records and she, she proved that she had gotten these calls. Now, what was said on the calls is between them and God. But she can prove that the calls actually happened. So Wendy is telling Necka, you sound crazy. Mia is in the background stirring shit like she do. I'm, like, I'm not surprised about this at all. And ain't that what Wendy said about me? Didn't she say I was crazy? Yep, she showed sure did. Well, baby, you not a good example because you's a damn fool for real. Wendy is yelling at Necka that she's been a hater since day one. Necka said hating on what exactly? Wendy gets up and she's doing that hating on all this stroll. And honestly, it's embarrassing. The whole scene is embarrassing. To have these two very educated, very accomplished, distinguished, intelligent, beautiful black women going at each other's necks for what? A spot on a Bravo show? Now, I ain't saying that to say Bravo ain't shit. But my point is, for all of the accomplishments, for all of the education that you have, you have to understand to some degree that the position that you find yourself in is because of who you have become, 
who you have built yourself into. So it's not that you have to fight over this spot. The spot is solidified by who you are. And this person showing up doesn't take away from the caliber of woman you are. They don't take away from what you bring to the table. So they can come to the table all day long. All they can do is pull up a chair for them because you do not threaten my seat. But it is utterly embarrassing to watch these black women go at each other's necks about clout. Wendy is screaming at NECA, yeah, you came to deliberately attack me and it failed. NECA is saying, attack you for what? Jealous of what? Girl, you could never. So the guys are off to the side and Eddie is telling Juan, at least they ain't talking about you and getting in your business. Juan said, I don't give a damn. We know you do. You will shut all this shit down soon as they start talking about you. NECA husband just sitting there looking like, yeah. I got something for y'all asses in just a minute. Now, why is you mad? Ashley and Robin off to the side having a corner conversation trying to make sure they got this Negro drama stirred up just the right way. Robin is telling Ashley, NECA told me all this when we went to dinner, but she's not letting her get it all out. I don't know who ain't letting what get out, but Robin, mind your damn business. Candace, of all people, interjects trying to restore the peace. Candace is telling NECA that Wendy is her own person. You can't hold Wendy responsible or accountable for what her mind mom or her sister do. Necka says, so Candace, you saying you okay with what they're doing? She said, no, I'm not saying I'm okay with what they're doing. But what I'm saying is what they're doing is not what Wendy is doing. Well, we hope. So Wendy starts explaining to the ladies the background of the beef. She's explaining to them that there was a conversation had between Necka and Ashley about the possibility of Wendy and her family being Osu. Ashley brought that conversation back to Wendy and Wendy says, because NECA made this whole shrine comment, that incriminates her. That lets her know that it was NECA that brought this to Ashley. Now, Ashley said in the confessional, I do not understand Wendy's reasoning because I already told Wendy that I misconstrued the conversation. So why is she using that as her defense? NECA said, you can keep trying to play detective and talk about what incriminates me, but it ain't incriminating me. It's indicating what your mother said. Wendy said, well, my mother worships our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. NECA said, by day, but by night she is submitting names to shrines. So production is asking the ladies in the confessionals, what do they think? Do they think this whole shrine thing is real? Giselle said, hell yeah. Absolutely don't ask me no more. Karen gave her politically correct answer. She said, I don't think Mama Sue is capable of praying to anyone but God because she prayed for me. Sidebar, excuse me. Let me, let me just say this. Now, I don't know nothing about Wendy Mama. This ain't got nothing to do with Wendy Mama. I'm not saying Wendy Mama practice nothing. I don't know what that lady do with her time or her face. But word to the wise, please get a little specific with people when they start talking about God. Everybody ain't praying to the same God. Your God may not be my God. So just because they say I pray to God don't mean they praying to the same God you asked them to pray to. Candace said, I don't know nothing about none of that. I don't know witchcraft and shrines and spell. I don't know nothing about none of that. I don't want nothing to do with it. Don't ask me about that shit. Black people do not play when it comes to this bullshit. So the ladies are trying to encourage them to work it out. And they're saying, you know, I really think y'all can work this issue out. Wendy said, you know who I want to work it out with? You know who I want to I want to work it out with Mia. This is where Wendy loses me. Robin said in the confessional, this is Professor Osefo demonstrating deflection 101. And I'll be damned, but I agree with Robin. Because what the hell is this? All of a sudden, Mia, who was public enemy number one, is the person you want to mend fences with? Like, girl, play with somebody else. Wendy, to me, just doesn't have a genuine bone in her body. From her personality to her relationships, I do not get genuine from her. And this is a moment that demonstrates that. Because the truth of the matter is, you don't like Mia. You don't want to be friends with Mia. You don't want to work it out with Mia. But this is a tactic to pull rank on NECA. So Mia agrees to step aside with Wendy. And she's like, girl, what's up? Wendy said, I don't know. I mean, she just got here and she's calling me a bitch. I don't think you and I have ever eaten. Well, yeah, I think we actually have. And of course, production rolled the tape back and showed Wendy calling Mia everything but a child of God. She done called her a corny crater face done called her trash dumb wendy said well even though you've thrown a drink in my face i would just like to clear the air and say that you know we're okay meanwhile everybody is at the table saying that NECA is telling the truth ashley and robin having a little side conversation about wendy is avoiding NECA, and NECA done told all us this shit. 
And Cal is off to the side with Giselle saying, I think NECA telling the truth. Giselle said, I know. So Candace is having a separate conversation with NECA and she's saying, you know, I just don't want the two Nigerian women to be fighting. NECA said, this ain't got shit to do with Nigerian. This is not a cultural thing. When her mama said, I have a shrine at my house, that has to do with voodoo. That ain't got shit to do with us. And just as she was explaining that, all the damn food flipped over. Just Everybody is panicking. Candace is screaming about, this is the demons coming to get us. Now they got me up in arms. I'm thinking it's the damn spirits too. But come to find out it was Juan. Juan was playing the pickleball game and they had the table too close to the damn fence around the court. He ran into the fence, knocked the table, the table knocked the food over. So the ladies are talking to NECA and Wendy separately, trying to get them to hash out the issue. NECA is saying, I ain't never had no issue with the girl and I still don't have an issue with her. All I said was, I don't know the damn girl and apparently that's the problem. Wendy is over there talking about how favor ain't fair and God clocked out while he was putting your life together, girl. So NECA is telling Mia how after the whole shrine threat happened, Wendy's husband unfollowed her husband on Facebook. So it's some sh going on. Mia's asking Neka, so hold on, they went to school together so they know each other? Neka said, I mean, well, I, they know of each other. Mia says, so did y'all speak today? And Neka's husband, I can say, so Mia said, all right, I, I got something for this. She walked her happy ass right on over there and said, Eddie, What's going on with you and Necker husband? Eddie said, I don't know what the hell that man talk. I don't know that man. I just met that man today. Juan, come on, come with me to talk to this man. So Eddie, Juan, and Mia go back over to Necker and Ike. Mia says to Necker's husband, Ike, you just said that Eddie unfollowed you on Facebook, right? I'll be damned if the man ain't turned to Eddie. Eddie, what is up with that? The f Eddie looked just as confused and Juan said, well, damn, I must have missed something. Because ain't no, hey, how you doing? Do you remember me from school? It's good to see you again. Just what's up with this beef? Eddie said, but I just met you today. Ike said, so you're saying we were never friends on Facebook? NECA is trying to interject to say, after her mom said what she said, that man turned into Ike damn Turner. That man said, wait, stop, baby, stop it. Who you talking to? And he turns back to Eddie. But I said, you saying we were never friends on Facebook? Eddie said, I just met you here today, bro. So you saying you don't know me? Say it with your chest. You don't know me. Oh, what is going on here? Wendy goes to step in Ike's face. And Necker said, ah, uh, back up. Don't, don't step in my husband's face, girl. I'm, she probably knows something you don't know. And that episode came to an end with them separating the guys and Necka telling Wendy, your mama's a witch. So we move on to the next episode and the ladies are heading to Austin, Texas for a getaway show. So Mia, Ashley, and Giselle are getting together to go shopping for this trip. And of course, they got to talk about people. So they're talking about the whole beef between Wendy and Necka and do y'all believe Necka? Well, Giselle said, I don't think Necka would kind of make up no bullshit like that. Like saying somebody's mama is a witch that's praying against an entire family ain't nothing to play with. And I don't think she would come play with us like that. Ashley said she agrees. And she said in the confessional that Neca speaks with too much conviction about the matter to just dismiss her. So while those ladies are catching up, we see Eddie and Wendy going out to eat. They're going to lunch, brunch, breakfast, child. I don't know. So at this lunch, brunch, whatever, Eddie clears the air about the whole mystery and history of him knowing Necka's husband, Ike. He said, yeah, we went to the same school, but we went at different times. I know you lying. So production asked Wendy, well, were they ever Facebook friends? Was Eddie ever Facebook friends with Ike? Wendy in the confessional looking around, <sighs> Just say yeah. Wendy said, well, I mean, it's a college campus. I don't remember everybody I went to college with, but I mean, it says a lot that you remember my husband. Giselle says she thinks the whole family is in on it. She says she don't buy this whole, Wendy has nothing to do with what her mother or her sister does. She said a family that prays together, stays together, even if they pray into a shrine. So we move on to catch up with Necka and her husband. They're headed to a fertility specialist appointment and they're catching up about the whole pickleball damn near brawl. Necka said in their culture, this whole shrine thing is nothing that they take lightly. It is very real. And the only reason a person would be submitting your name to a shrine is for death and destruction. She said now under normal circumstances, she would have preferred to talk to Wendy in a private setting. 
but it just came out where she saw her. She said, because I couldn't understand why she was being fake with me. Well, as they're catching up about this whole group, the doctor comes in and lets them know they are just fine. They could have 10 kids if they wanted to. Neka's husband says, see, the problem ain't our bodies, it's our schedules. We need to be touching each other more often than we do. The doctor told Neka, you keep taking your prenatals. Y'all keep touching each other at night. Give it another six months. Neka said, I'm not trying to wait six months. I want something done now. Well, you going on down to the city and change your name to God if that's how you feel. Well, we move on. We see Mia and Gordon. They are going to a marriage counselor to discuss the issues that they're having with adjusting to all of the changes that they're going through financially. Well, as Mia is bringing the counselor up to speed about everything that has gone on with them and their marriage and their business, she announces that she had actually retained a divorce attorney because she was ready to go. So the counselor asked Mia, well, why did you file for divorce? Well, Mia explains to the counselor that Gordon had gotten so caught up in what was going on with work, they started arguing and because she grew up in an abusive environment, she always said that she would never subject her kids to that. So because they weren't getting along and she didn't want her children to see mommy and daddy arguing, she figured the best thing to do is file for a divorce. Mia said she wants Gordon to retire. She wants him to focus on being this great father. Gordon said the problem is I am a father. I'm a father and a husband. And I was trying to get to a certain point financially before I stopped working. He said, I wanted to get to a position where I know that no matter what happens to me, she and the kids are okay. So Mia's explaining to the counselor that Gordon was working really hard toward whatever goals he had at the time that he got voted out of the company. She said, so he got voted out. They're now suing the company. And then on top of that, they had a sale of a business. They retained an attorney to represent them in the sale. The sale was completed. The attorney got the money and said he was keeping part of the monies in escrow. Well, the attorney stopped answering the damn phone for them and never gave them their money. So they decided to file suit. Not only was he ruled against, but he was also disbarred. All of that led to him unaliving himself. Child. Mia said at the time that they were having this conversation that this had only happened a few weeks before that and she was concerned about how this was going to affect Gordon's family. So it sounds like what she's saying is this attorney was one of Gordon's family members. Gordon said that's just the difference between he and Mia. He said he really respects that she's the sensitive one, that she's caring and concerned about people. But she said when it comes to business, Gordon is shrewd. He is going to go all the way when you play with him. So here's the thing. Mia is in the confessional talking about how put off she is by how shrewd of a business person Gordon is. She says something along the lines of this, this just isn't the man I married. Girl, you a damn lie. This is absolutely the man you married. A man who would turn his back on his wife and family to go philandering on a Mexican beach with you is absolutely the person that don't give a damn if you jump off some sh behind their chair. I don't know, child. They got a whole mess. Now, I'm very sorry for the family's loss, but it sounds like there is a whole lot of corruption running up and through that family. We move on and we see all the ladies go to the airport. They're headed off to Texas. They land in Texas and they must have kept the beef in their carry-ons because they picked up right where they left off in damn Potomac. Between Candace and Karen, Robin S don't stand a chance. She want to know why Ashley got her in the damn car with Candace, knowing she don't fuck with Candace. Candace sitting there looking confused, but I don't, I don't understand why Robin doesn't want anything to do with me. And they show a clip of her S on the YouTube calling Robin all kinds of frauds and shit. That's the thing with Candace. Candace will throw a rock and then don't understand why the glass broke. Giselle is in the other vehicle with Ashley and Karen and she's asking Karen about the state of her relationship with Robin. She said, listen, I tried with Robin. Me and Robin are right. I want to see her win. I can't say I love her and all that, but I tried. So the ladies are all at the hotel. They get settled in. They pick their rooms. They go down to the pool. They start out with hashing out the beef between Candace and Giselle. Karen said, Giselle, I noticed that when Candace is around, you are a lot more quiet. Giselle said, I'm totally fine. Candace said, there's nothing to face. The thing is, she thinks that if she ignores me, I'm going to go away, but my black ass is right here. You know, sometimes I just want Candace to show up in a way that doesn't scream, I'm excited, I don't need my mother's permission to curse. 
Giselle said, I never said that. For the sake of my and my children's safety, I just choose not to engage. Candace said, no, if anything, it was me and my bonus kids that had to go through all the mental anguish of you and the lies you told. And she said in the confessional, you can't just go around lying on people and not expect to get your ass handed to you. And in the confessional, Giselle is saying, well, Candace, all that happened was I told you that your husband made me uncomfortable because he made me go into a bedroom and close the door. See, Giselle, that's the damn problem. Your language and semantics, that's the problem. Because did that man make you go into a bedroom and make you close the door? It's the way you say stuff. It ain't what you say, it's how you say it, and you know exactly how you saying it. Now, while the ladies are hashing out their issues, Mia and Robin are taking a walk for Mia to get her issues off her chest. And of course, the reason she's confiding in Robin is because Robin can relate. This is the same exact thing that happened to she and Juan years ago. Mia says she's dealing with a lot of mixed emotions about the situation because she never expected it to take this turn. And as far as she's concerned, it's just money. Her thing is that this man had a young daughter and a wife and she said she feels guilty. She has these panic attacks because she questions whether this would have gone this way if they had never reported him to the Bar Association. I, I totally understand where Mia is coming from in terms of some of the guilt that she feels, but as harsh as it may sound, my thing is you cannot carry the burden for the wrong somebody else has done to you. If they did you wrong and you went about righting that wrong to the best of your ability, and then this was the action that this person chose to take as a response to you righting the wrong that they did to you, that's their burden. You cannot carry the burden for the choice that they made. So back at the hotel, the ladies are still having their round table. And Karen said, well, I want to go back to Giselle for a second because Giselle at the pickleball game, you were alarmingly quiet. Giselle said, yeah, because it was some alarming shit going on. That whole witchcraft shit threw me for a loop. Candace said to Nekka, now that's a disturbing and harsh allegation. And it's one thing, if you believe that, Nekka said, I do. Wendy said, you do? She said, yeah, because she said that. She so now Wendy is saying this is all hearsay. This is nothing you heard for yourself on the phone. This is something somebody came and told you was said to them. Nekka said, yeah, because my in-law is not a liar. And Giselle said, well, Wendy, your mama done said some stuff about Mia in the past. Well, just then Robin and Mia walk up and they're asking why y'all looking like that because they're dragging each other to hell. Giselle said, well, Mia sent you here. Wendy's mama had got on social media and didn't quite put you on an altar, but, but dragged you to hell. And would you look at everything that's going on in Mia's life? Wendy decides to pull up her mother's post from social media and she reads the post verbatim. Her mama says something along the lines of calling Mia ugly inside and out called her a crater face, a bombastic, baseless, senseless, wannabe CEO. She said to hell with Mia and Peter, holy ghost fire and thunderstorm on the amen. Well, if that ain't a curse. Wendy said, see, there's no witchcraft there. Mia said, well, well, I thought it was when, when I read it back when she wrote that, I perceived it as her sending me holy ghost fire. So, so now Wendy got a different story. She said, the issue was never NECA. NECA is running around by, your mom said she was going to put my name on a shrine, but it never had anything to do with NECA. She said the issue was NECA's in-law, Lebe, and Wendy's older sister, Ivy, used to be friends and they're no longer friends. NECA said, nice try, but that's some bullshit. It was not a fight between friends. My in-law Lebe called me and told me that Wendy was running around upset because somehow she got some story that I was using her name to access a social group. But that's not true. I've never told anybody she's my friend and I know her. She said, because I don't know her. I've seen her at an event. I've seen her in passing, but I don't know her. So Wendy starts going off about, you knew exactly who I was. You came and went against your fellow Nigerian with the sole purpose and intent to attack me. Girl, what? Nekka said, please get out of here. Go somewhere with that. Giselle said, well, where did all this hate come from? Nekka said the hate came from her sister communicating that I'm a clout chaser, that I'm jealous of her and all this other bullshit. What it comes down to is she found out I was coming on the show. She told her mama and her sister and they got mad. And quite honestly, that sounds accurate. That sounds like Wendy. 
And a few of the other ladies are in the confessional saying that they believe what NECA is saying too, that they think that there is some truth to Wendy being bothered by NECA, her fellow Nigerian, coming on the show. So NECA is saying, I can pull the call records, I can prove that these conversations happen. And so Wendy is still on her defense. Well, that's because NECA's in-law and my sister were friends, but they're not friends anymore. NECA said, yeah, the friendship ended as of April 7th when your mama said she put my name on a shrine. For some reason, Candace decided to ask, how old is Libby? Wendy said, I don't know, that's my sister's friend. NECA said, oh, so you don't know her. That's not your friend, that's your sister's friend, but you were announcing her at your daughter's sip and see. Okay, Wendy starts stuttering and trying to come up with an explanation and that, that was, and, and, and no, production said yes. They pulled the footage and the episode ended with them showing the clip of Wendy at her sip and see and her giving special recognition to Lebe. Now all the ladies looking at her sideways, Candace said in the confessional, I just think it's weird to claim to not know someone and have invited them to celebrate the birth of your child. So of course this week's episode picks up in the middle of this why you always lying argument. So everybody is looking at Wendy confused now, like, wait a minute now, you said you didn't know the lady, but the lady was at your daughter's sip and see? Wendy said, I mean, well, she's my sister's friend, girl. Ashley in the confessional said, I don't understand why Wendy lying like this. Like, if the lady was at her party, she honored the lady, why is she now saying she don't know the lady? And not only was she at the party, the lady was given a gala, a headdress. And according to what she told us, you don't give any old body off the street that headdress. She said, so why is she lying? Wendy said in the confessional, yes, she was at my daughter's sip and see. Yes, she did get a gay lay, but in all fairness, so did Giselle. NECA said, but you honored her as somebody you want your daughter to emulate, but you don't know her. Wendy said, well, how do you know? Were you at the party or were you still in LA smoking crack? Girl, what? This is what Wendy does. When Wendy can't defend herself, she gets disrespectful. This is giving everything she's saying about me is true and I'm mad that I'm excited. Exposed because what the hell is that? NECA is a damn attorney. NECA told her you better be careful with the allegations. She said in the confessional, this is all a deflection. This is Wendy deflecting from what her and her family did. They mad that they tried to attack me in the spirit and I still got a seat at the table. So they decide to break it up and go dance it off. They go off to dance and try to have a good time. Candace pulls Necka to the side and she wants to check on her. She said, you know, I can tell that you were genuinely hurt. And as she's talking to Necka, here comes Wendy about Candace. As far as me and her, I'm asking you to please don't talk about me. I'm asking you that as your friend. And I'm asking you to get the hell up out my face because I'm a grown ass woman and I'm going to have whatever conversations I deem necessary. This is part of Wendy's problem. Wendy is manipulative and she's controlling. You're not going to tell me what kind of conversations I can have with my grown ass around my friend circle. Go sit down. Candace said in the confessional, I don't mind Wendy telling me how she feels, but I'm not about to change my stripes for anybody. If I feel it's necessary to have a conversation with this woman because I can see that she's going through it with the damn shrine people, that's what I'm going to do. So they wrap this mess up and they all go get changed and they head to a restaurant for dinner. Well, they're at this restaurant, they're ordering drinks. I don't even recall what the hell prompted the question. All I know is the next thing I know, Wendy is taking a poll of the ladies at the table who swallow. Girl, what? Every time I tune into this show, they descend to a lower level of hell. They are having a full-on discussion about all the nasty shit they're willing to do. Just so they wrap up all they nasty talking, all the shit they ain't doing to try to hold their relationships together. And NECA decides that this is a perfect time to share with the group her pregnancy aspirations. I mean, y'all talking about all the sex and all the nasty shit. So I might as well talk about actually making it productive. She said that this trip was perfectly timed because of everything she's going through with her fertility journey, that she's been working on it, but they haven't had any success. And so she kind of needed to relax, get away and get her mind off of it. Now, personally, 
I don't know if I would have announced that with my op sitting at the table, but I mean, do you? So the ladies all go back to the hotel. They play around and tear up Robin's room for a while and then they retreat to their own rooms. Now, Candace uses this opportunity to play her little sister role with Robin. She wants to borrow Robin's slides to go back to her room and she's telling Robin, I really want us to talk tomorrow. Robin said, you know, it, it's tripping me out that Candace is in my face wanting to wear my slippers and she want to have a conversation with me and she's acting like ain't she happened. So Robin agrees to a conversation with Candace the next day and they move on. We move on to the next day where they're all getting together in Ashley's room. First, we see Ashley, Robin, and Giselle. They're all talking about why Candace is talking to Robin like she wasn't just on the internet dragging Robin straight to hell and suggesting that she be fired from the damn show. Giselle said, I don't know how you let her in your damn room and just then Candace came in the room. Now, apparently what they're all gathered together in Ashley's room for is a sip and paint party. Do you know what these heifers is painting? Ashley wants them to paint their interpretation of their vajayjays. I'm, I'm done and disgusted. It's like Bravo is out to suck every drop of class out of this show. How do we go from Potomac that was supposed to be this etiquette centered place where everyone has to behave a certain way to Luke chapter 69. Well, Karen decides this is the perfect opportunity to confront Robin about how she shows up in the group. She said, you know, Robin, Ashley gave you the other penthouse because she felt like you needed it. You needed the support, you needed the getaway, but nobody else in the group really understands why you need the support, why you should get that room, what's going on with you. You choose to share with one pocket of the group, which kind of divides us. Robin said, what I'm going through personally is not dividing the group. What it is, is I speak to those people who personally reach out to me and ask me how I'm doing. Candace said, well, what about when I reached out to you and asked you how you were doing and you just left me on red? Robin said, you cannot be serious. Robin said, after you have trashed me on social media, do you know what I've been through? I've been through torture. Candace said, well, so have I. Robin said, well, was that at my expense? Karen said, yeah, it was at your expense because you were hiding your life and what you were going through. Robin said, if I didn't tell my mama what happened, why the f would I come tell y'all? And that's when it hit me. This is why she lies the way she does. Robin lies for one the way that she does for the sake of her parents. She wants her parents to have this image of Juan and her and Juan and the family that they put together. And she is willing to lie, embarrass herself, manipulate a story, do whatever she has to do to not have to tell her parents the truth. It literally hit me as she was screaming this. Karen said, but Robin, you need to be accountable Robin went into straight nut mode. Robin said, well, what you want to do? Beat me up? Hold me accountable. I'm here. I'm here. Well, could you sit your ass down? Karen Crazy has had me screaming when this fool was in the confessional and said, Robin jumping around screaming and them damn pajamas she had on reminded her of those women in polygamy camps. When Karen slapped that damn hat on her head, I want is a good man. You just don't know. I and lost it. Robin said, can we please stop this because this is a very personal experience that y'all are trying to make me the villain for. Karen said, yeah, it's a personal experience that you dragged us into. Robin said, no, I didn't. Karen said, when you put a price tag of $5.99 on it and decided to sell it to the world, hell yeah, you did. Robin said, but what does that have to do with you? Robin, everything you want to show with these people, a reality show, and you chose to hide your real life and participate in storylines and conversations about their real lives as a deflection from your real life. There's a lot. Robin said, well, I'm happy to answer any of your questions, but when you're going to attack me like I've done something to you, that's when it's a problem. Wendy said, well, here's a question I have. Why did we never see you going to your home girl over there telling her I'm so stressed out because I have X, Y, and Z going on in my life? So Robin starts out by explaining that the girl originally DM'd her. She didn't see the DM, so the girl DM'd Giselle. 
Giselle jumps in to say, and just because y'all didn't see or hear the conversations doesn't mean that she and I never had the conversations. Karen say bullshit, and I call second on that bullshit. Because how the hell y'all have televised conversations about everybody else's business? But when it comes to Robin and her philandering ass husband, now mom's the word. So Candace asked Robin, you said that you got these DMs that you never read. So are you not curious in the least about what the conversations were between them? What the exchange was? Is there anything you should know? Robin said, no, not not really. And at that point, Juan no longer had the conversations between them because he cleans his phone out like crazy. He deletes stuff all the time. Ba girl, damn, just uh-uh. It ain't a red flag, it's red riding hood. Bitch. What do you mean he cleans his phone out all the time? Girl, just say you the head wife in charge because what the hell do you mean this man deletes stuff out he just cleans his phone out like crazy yeah that's what cheating men do candace said why the hell is he wiping his phone all the time for safety robin said i mean that's just the way he is he doesn't even store people's phone numbers he's just weird everybody looking at her like you cannot be this damn dumb well, they don't argue so damn long. They ain't got time left to do the damn sip and paint and paint they bajajays. Thank God. So Ashley passes around a hat for them to draw options about where they're going to go for the afternoon. Apparently, the group is too big for all of them to go to one place. So they have two different activities planned and they're going to split up between them. Some of the ladies are going to go cowboy boot shopping. And then the other ladies are going to a distillery. Now, it ain't but seven of them. So I'm trying to figure out why is the group too big to all go do one thing? So at the distillery is Mia, Karen, Candace, and Wendy. Mia keeps announcing that she's not drinking. Girl, we know. It, like, don't make it your personality. Just go have you some water. Well, they're outside having their drinks, eating their food, and they see a bird. Wendy said, now y'all know my history with birds because remember Ashley had that bird that attacked Wendy when she first came on the show? Mia looks at the damn bird, which I think was a black crow or some kind of bird, and asks Wendy, is that your mama? Mia said, oh, I'm just playing. Wendy said, don't play with me like that. Don't play with my mama. Mia said, well, can we clear this up? Did you say that your mom did not submit any names to a shrine? Wendy said, well, I didn't think I would ever have to defend this, but when y'all are saying shrine the way that you're saying it, it leaves it up to the imagination to come up with what a shrine is. But in Catholicism, Catholics have shrines. She said every saint has their own shrine and it's not anything negative. Mia said, so you do use shrines. Wendy said, no, I didn't say that. I said Catholics use shrines. Well, ain't you telling us you a Catholic? So they all kind of like, oh, okay, well, that's enlightening. We didn't know that. Wendy said that this whole conversation was very triggering for her because she grew up being misunderstood because she's Nigerian. But, but the accusation is coming from another Nigerian. And she starts tearing up when she's explaining that, you know, she is grateful to have been raised by a woman of Christ and that it just hurts to hear her mother maligned in this way. So Wendy starts crying about, you know, when you've been raised by a single mom who gave up everything so that you could have a good life, you're not just going to sit by while somebody attacks her. Well, I get that. I, I, I totally get that. But I also feel like there's a whole bunch of bullshit mixed into this because this is the same mother who also attacked Mia online. Like I get that Mia and Wendy had their beef and whatever goes on between them goes on between them. But when your mama decides she's gonna jump on the internet and she's gonna insert herself into this stuff and she's throwing Holy Ghost fire and thunderstorms and calling people crater face dummies and all kinds of stuff, you, you, you got to save the whole y'all can't talk bad about my mama speech. Mia said, well, we've had our differences, but clearly this is a very sensitive topic for you. So I'm just going to leave it alone. So after they do their separate adventures, all the ladies come together at a restaurant. Well, they're sitting around ordering food and drinks. And while they're waiting on their food to come out, they're talking. And Neka is explaining how her American wedding was a disaster. 
but she still has her traditional Nigerian wedding to plan. So she's hoping that that's gonna make up for everything that she didn't get with the first wedding. Well, as she's announcing how she can't wait for her Nigerian wedding and it's so important to be on her father's land, Wendy is just sitting there smirking, looking at her. And I'm thinking to myself, now if you truly believe this girl and her mama is submitting your name to shrines and all kind of stuff, at what point are you gonna stop telling your plans to the enemy? Now, I'm not saying Wendy and her mom and them is a witch, but I'm just saying, if you believe that somebody is an op, an enemy of enemy energy, they are low vibrational, whatever you want to call it, why would you be announcing your moves to the enemy? So Ashley is talking to the group about the other events they have planned, something about some chicken shit bingo. Just God. Mia said, well, speaking of chicken shit, we need to find you a new man. Are you and Michael still getting a divorce? Ashley said, well, yes, we are still getting divorced, but we're working out some of the logistics in terms of custody. Mia said, well, what are you leaning toward? Ashley said, well, in a perfect world, I would have my kids five days a week and then Michael would get them every other weekend. They say every other weekend, not every weekend. She said, hell no, I couldn't imagine going that long without my kids. No, I think you don't trust Michael. Mia said, well, why are we on the subject of Michael? What's going on with that lawsuit, Candace? Candace said, I'm not discussing that amongst this group. So here go Robin of all damn people. Well, can we get a list of what we can and cannot talk about? Candace said, no, we can be dense another damn day. Robin said, excuse me, dense? Candace said, yes, dense. Robin, you ain't dumb. She said, this is a legal matter and it only makes sense to not talk about it amongst this group. But maybe you don't realize that because you went against that when you talked about Juan's legal situation in this group. Well, just all right. Candace said, I don't know if talking about the situation helped you and I'm not going to make those same mistakes. Robin said, Juan's legal situation doesn't have anything to do with anything. Wendy piped up and said, so, so you telling me as a professor at a university that your husband, who was a coach, at a university, getting a Title IX violation from this university ain't, ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Robin said no, especially when it's straight lies. I mean, think about it. Juan was being represented by the state of Maryland, and that's because they know that this is bullshit. Or was he an employee of the state of Maryland? So Wendy explains in the confessional that Title IX or Title IX violation prohibits discrimination based on sex, gender, or sexual orientation. And she's saying that coaches are supposed to be leaders. And if the coach is not in good moral standing, that trickles down to the entire team. And for him to have this accusation coupled with all the publicity for his infidelity, for Robin to think that that's not why he got fired, she's a damn fool. Robin went as far as to say that the university knows that Juan didn't do anything wrong. They know that he informed his athletic director immediately. He met with campus police. He didn't violate Title IX. Well, what the hell he got fired for? Robin and her limited vocabulary are in the confessional about he didn't do anything he's accused of in this lawsuit. There is no Title IX violation. So Miss Smarty Pants can just shut up because she's just trying to make it worse. Yeah, everybody but Juan. Everybody but Juan is trying to take Juan down. Girl, go to hell. So the ladies wrap up their legal eagle dinner and they head back to the hotel to change clothes so they can go to this chicken sh bingo that Ashley done signed them up for. Well, the episode is ending as they're heading to this chicken sh bingo, but the ladies are in their two separate vehicles and they're having conversations. So we have Robin, Candace, Mia, and Wendy and one truck together. Candace and Robin are sitting in the the back seat together and Mia said well this is better than this morning y'all seem to be able to at least be around each other so are y'all interested in having a conversation Robin said I'm not interested in a conversation they said well why not Robin said to imply that anything that I said had anything to do with Juan getting fired just didn't feel good to me Candace said well honestly I don't think it's smart to talk about any ongoing legal situation and I mean any body in the law I'll tell you that. Candace said, now I don't know, but I don't believe you talking about the situation helped it at all. Robin broke down crying. She said, this is the worst part of what we've been going through. And, and then you, Wendy, you talk about a Title IX violation. Y'all don't even know what you're talking about. Well, tell somebody, tell somebody what the hell is going on. 
You over there living in secret, trying to have a public life on a TV show and mad at everybody that they don't believe this half brain half-baked ass lie that you and Juan came up with. You mean to tell two of y'all brands came up with this dumb ass story to give us and you crying because we don't believe it. And the episode came to an end with her saying, y'all are trying to turn me into a villain and I didn't do anything to any of y'all. Oh, okay, girl. But y'all, that's it, that's all. And I ain't got no more. They done exhausted me. Thank you so much for coming down here listening to me and letting me get this off my chest. Please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you have not already. And in the meantime, until next time, just like every time, I love you and I mean it. Bye.